The Battle of Malden took place three weeks before Whitson on 10 August 991 AD near Malden beside the River Blackwater in Essex, England, during the reign of Ethelred the Unready. Earl Burtness and his Thens led the English against a Viking invasion. The battle ended in an Anglo-Saxon defeat. After the battle Archbishop Sigeric of Canterbury and the aldermen of the southwestern provinces advised King Ethelred to buy off the Vikings, rather than continue the armed struggle. The result was a payment of 10,000 Roman pounds of silver, the first example of Danegeld in England. An account of the battle, embellished with many speeches attributed to the warriors and with other details is related in an old English poem which is usually named the Battle of Malden, a modern embroidery created for the Millennium Celebration in 1991 and, in part, depicting the battle, can be seen at the Malgen Centre in Malden. One manuscript of the Anglo-Saxon chronicle said a Norwegian, Olaf Trygesson, led the Viking forces estimated to have been between 2,000 and 4,000 fighting men. A source from the 12th century, Liber Eliensis, written by the monks at Ely, suggests that Burtnuth had only a few men to command. He was neither shaken by the small number of his men, nor fearful of the multitude of the enemy. Not all sources indicate such a disparity in numbers. The poem The Battle of Malden the Battle of Malden is the name conventionally given to a surviving 325-line fragment of Old English poetry. Linguistic study has led to the conjecture that initially the complete poem was transmitted orally, then in a lost manuscript in the East Saxon dialect and now survives as a fragment in the West Saxon form, possibly that of a scribe active at the monastery of Worcester late in the 11th century. It is fortuitous that this was attached at an early date to a very notable manuscript, Ass's Life of King Alfred, which undoubtedly assisted in its survival. The manuscript, by now detached, was burned in the Cotton Library fire at Ashburnham House in 1731. The keeper of the collection, John Elphinstone, had transcribed the 325 lines of the poem in 1724 but the front and back pages were already missing from the manuscript. An earlier catalogue described it as fragmentum capitare calsa mutilatum. As a result, vital clues about the purpose of the poem and perhaps its date have been lost. At the time of battle, English royal policy of responding to Viking incursions was split. Some favoured paying off the Viking invaders with land and wealth, while others favoured fighting to the last man. The poem suggests that Burtnuth held this latter attitude, hence his moving speeches of patriotism. The Vikings sailed up the Blackwater, and Burtnuth called out his levy. The poem begins with him ordering his men to stand and to hold weapons. His men, except for his household guard, were peasants and householders from the area. He ordered them to send steed away and stride forwards. They arrived on horses but fought on foot. The Vikings sailed up to a small island in the river. At low tide, the river leaves a land bridge from this island to the shore. The description seems to have matched the Northy Island Causeway at that time. This would place the site of the battle about two miles southeast of Malden. Olaf addressed the Saxons, promising to sail away if he was paid with golden armor from the Lord. Burtnuth replied. We will pay you with spear tips and sword blades. Olaf's forces could not make headway against the troops guarding the small land bridge, and he asked Burtnuth to allow his warriors onto the shore. Burtnuth, for his offer mode, let all the Vikings cross to the mainland. Battle was joined, but an Englishman called Godric fled riding Burtnuth's horse. Godric's brothers Godwin and Godwig followed him. Then, many English fled, recognizing the horse and thinking that its rider was Burtnuth fleeing. To add insult to injury, it is stated that Godric had often been given horses by Burtnuth, a detail that, especially during the time period, would have had Godric marked as a coward and a traitor, something that could have easily been described as worse than death. The Vikings overcame the Saxons after losing many men, killing Burtnuth. 
After the battle Burtnoth's body was found with its head missing, but his gold-hilted sword was still with his body. There is some discussion about the meaning of off-air mode, although literally meaning over-heart, or having too much heart. It could mean either pride, or excess of courage. One argument is that the poem was written to celebrate Burtnoth's actions and goad others into heroic action, and Burtnoth's action stands proudly in a long tradition of heroic literature. Another viewpoint, most notably held by J.R.R. Tolkien, is that the poem is an elegy on a terrible loss and that the monastic author pinpoints the cause of the defeat in the commander's sin of pride, a viewpoint bolstered by the fact that off-air mode is, in every other attested instance, used to describe Satan's pride. There is a memorial window, representing Burtnoth's dying prayer, in St. Mary's Church at Malden. It is believed by many scholars that the poem, while based upon actual events and people, was created to be less of a historical account and more of a means of enshrining and lifting up the memories of the men who fought and lost their lives on the battlefield protecting their homeland, especially in the case of the English commander of the battle, Burtnoth. He seems to embody many of the virtues that are uplifted in the Anglo-Saxon world, and is compared often by many scholars to the character Beowulf. North invaders and Norse raiders differed in purpose. The forces engaged by the Anglo-Saxon were raiding, or I Viking, to gather loot, rather than to occupy land for settlement. Therefore, if Burtnoth's forces had kept the Vikings off by guarding the causeway or by paying them off, Olaf would likely have sailed farther up the river or along the coast, and raided elsewhere. As a man with troops and weapons, it might be that Burtnoth had to allow the Vikings ashore to protect others. The poem may, therefore, represent the work of what has been termed the monastic party in Ethelred's court, which advocated a military response, rather than tribute, to all Norse attacks. In modern fiction, the homecoming of Beortnoth Beortnoth's son is the title of a work by J. R. R. Tolkien that was originally published in 1953 in Volume 6 of the scholarly journal Essays and Studies by members of the English Association. It is a work of historical fiction, inspired by the Old English Malden fragment. It is written in the form of an alliterative poem, but is also a drama being mainly a dialogue between two characters in the aftermath of the Battle of Malden. The work was accompanied by two essays, also by Tolkien, one before and one after the main work. At Malden by J.O. Morgan is a book-length poem retelling the story of the Battle of Malden in modern English. K.V. Johansson's short story, Anno Domini 991, in the collection The Storyteller and Other Tales is a retelling of the Battle of Malden. In one episode of the science fiction novel Perlandra by C. S. Lewis, the protagonist finds himself shouting a line out of the Battle of Malden as he fights the Unman, a demon-possessed scientist. The Swedish best-selling historical novel The Long Ships by Franz G. Bengtsson includes a long fictionalized account of the Battle of Malden, described from the Scandinavian side. In David Drake's short story is Our Strength Lessons in Keith Laumer's Bolo series. A sentient tank named after the Battle of Malden discusses the battle with a human officer. They consider whether Burtnoth and his men acted nobly or failed in their mission to protect the land and people from the Viking invaders. The English black metal band Winter Phyllis have two songs in their album The Ghost of Heritage that remembers the Battle of Malden and track 3, Brithnoth, The Battle of Malden. The Norwegian, German symphonic metal band Leaves Eyes has a song called The Battle of Malden on their 2009 EP, My Destiny.